What's up, everybody? We're here for Classic Cast number seven now. We're here for Classic Cast number seven. I'm here with Stay Safe. I'm here with Tips Out. And, How are you guys uh, doing? A little bit of an audio issue here. What's up, everybody? Yeah, we're here for Classic Cast number seven. Uh, we, it's, it's been a long time. It's been a, it's been a real long time since we last did one of these. Um, it's, been a, it's been probably over a month now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, like five or six weeks, I think, right? It's been a little bit. It's been a little bit. We've been, we've been busy boys. Absolutely. In fact, it's been so long that our webcams have frozen. Oh, literally. Really? Is it better now? There you go. There we go. <laughs> We're good. There we go. Okay. <laughs> well, are we good? <clears throat> We're good. We're good. Okay. okay. So if, uh, I mean, for those of you guys who, who uh, haven't been, been, uh, maybe fully invested, maybe maybe haven't been following along so much. Uh, we, a, a few big things have happened over the last few weeks. Namely, namely, we got BlizzCon tickets. We went, mm -hmm. we got BlizzCon tickets, which was, yes, that was big time. We got BlizzCon tickets. So Classicast is, is going to be traveling to BlizzCon, which is going to be a lot of fun, where we're finally get to all hang out together, get to do, uh, what, we, we, might, we might get to do some fun stuff there, like some fun videos or mm -hmm. whatever. So that'll be that'll, that'll be big time for sure. That'll be big yeah, time I'm for expecting, sure. I'm expecting a lot of classic uh, news at BlizzCon. I think this will be a very heavy classic centric BlizzCon. What do you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't know about BlizzCon, guys. I'm not sure I'm going to be there, but Classic Con, I will be there. Absolutely. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> no, I, I really, I really do think that uh, it, it's just going to be what the hype is all about. I mean, there, there's nothing. To me, there's nothing that's gonna be coming out, or, or nothing that's, that's anticipated to come out, <clears throat> that's gonna be anywhere close to Classic WoW. And, and I think you could actually turn the entire thing, kind of like Tip said, like it's Classicon, right? Turn the entire thing into, you know, we're gonna have Warcraft Three remastered. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. I, I think I think it's gonna be a great time. I think it's gonna be an absolute blast. For sure. Yeah. I mean I mean, I mean, obviously, we don't know what they're going to talk about. Like, they could have some sort of secret thing they're going to announce. But in my mind, growing up, like, paying attention to BlizzCons for the last decade or so, there's two types of BlizzCons. BlizzCons where they have a big WoW expansion announcement, and then sleeper BlizzCons where they don't have a big WoW announcement, right? Right. You know, if, if they have, like, a new Hearthstone expansion or Overwatch Hero to announce, I, maybe I'm biased, but uh, that's not really, like... That's kind of sleeper. We we need some classic news. I think that's going to be the big seller this BlizzCon. Yeah, I, I think it's not. Uh, it's really not hard to screw up BlizzCon. I mean, that's that's pretty much what everybody wants. That's that's what the hype's all about. Like I said, I mean, if they go in and and they let's say by some crazy stretch of the imagination they just don't talk about classic at BlizzCon, <laughs> like I just. I think that's pretty much the only way that they could they could fail. Or like if they came out and they said like, "Hey guys, still working on it." Okay, here's here's the new Overwatch map or whatever. It's like, dude, really? Oh, dude, Im imagine the, the public outcry. <laughs> imagine the outcry if they don't mention Classic. You've seen the BFA Q and A's. People spam yeah. Classic and Classic cones and art. Like people just spam Classic news during the BFA Q and A's. Yeah, people yeah. are desperate for it. They're thirsty. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So um, we we. Uh, something else has happened. Last week I was on Allcraft. Uh, some of you guys might be here from that. Uh, I was on Allcraft talking classic with, uh, with Hot Ed, with Rich, with Asmongold. And we got a chance to go into, just kind of, we didn't really go, we, we didn't have enough time, to be completely honest. We didn't have enough time to go really deep into the wide variety of topics that we touched on. But there was a lot of topics that we touched on. And I thought it would be good to, for this classic cast, since it happened recently, go into some of that stuff, talking about sharding, talking about Q-dodging, and uh, we're, we're going to finish with a Q&A today as well. So, um, the, the Let's first do thing, it. Yeah, yeah, the first thing that I do want to talk about is the sharding, because I, I actually, I, I came out and I was talking about it like almost like it was a joke. Like I was like, right guys, there's going to be no sharding, but I kind of got the feeling that people were like, well, why not? Which blows my mind, honestly. Um, I see sharding as something that is very not vanilla. You know, we talk about vanilla is vanilla. Ian Hesacosta said it. That's what everybody wants. It's people want vanilla WoW. The overwhelming majority of people want no changes. Whatever that no changes means to them, for me, it's 1.1 to 1.12. 
in between there come up with that version of WoW, right? So yeah. I would be absolutely shocked if we have sharding. I mean, what's the quote? Uh, I don't know what word, but Eon Hazakostas came out during that. What was it? The first BFA Q&A. He says, we know it's about the community with the rough edges, but it's about the community. So sharding does huge, it hugely undermines the community aspect of, uh, of server community and server identity. Like uh, knowing, knowing that if you're leveling a Stranglethorn Veil, Everyone that's there, you're actually seeing and you can engage with, is a huge, huge part of like being able to make friends. I, 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 I really, really dislike sharding. I hate sharding. <laughs> yeah, I'm with I you. I would probably not play classic WoW if there was sharding. That's how much I dislike it. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think unfortunately, the, people are operating under the assumption that things are going to be a lot higher than they are. Um, I don't know if it was misunderstood on Allcraft, but it seems like some of the retail guys think that the servers are going to be like 20,000 people. And obviously, as we know, the, the Blizz-like population caps back in vanilla were around 3,000. And even if Blizzard decides to expand that, I can't imagine they go like beyond five, six, seven thousand 7,000 at the greatest. I think it's just ridiculous beyond that. So in that case, sharding is not going to be nearly as, as necessary, I think, as a lot of those guys thought. But yeah. Yeah, I think that I, I personally... <laughs> I think 5,000 is, is a fine number. I think mm -hmm. you can have a server that's, I mean, we did it 14 years ago, 2,500, 3,000 people. I think even that's fine. You can play on a server with that many people and have a lot of fun. But one of the things that have come up recently is, well, private servers have whatever server cap, you know, 10K, 15K, whatever. And yeah. people have kind of gotten used to that private server experience playing with an international community, the server's pretty much always popping off, morning, night, whatever time you're playing, like that's that's pretty cool. Like I, I get that, I understand that. But in terms of what Blizzard is doing, this kind of stuff ends up, it's like a snowball effect, right? Okay, if we increase the population, raise the population cap, now you're gonna have to talk about dynamic respawns. If you're talking about dynamic respawns, then you're gonna have this, you're gonna have that. Because you can't just have like the same respawn times for everything whenever it was designed for 2,500 or, or 3,000 people. If you yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, so like, I mean, at that point, your your economy is gonna be bad. If you have it too, if you have the response too fast, economy is gonna be bad because you're, you're gonna have, uh, it, it, everything's gonna be inflated. So th there's a lot of, and this is why I think the classic beta is so, so important, is because they're gonna have to do a lot of like, okay, let's look at this, let's look at that. Like, how is this gonna work? How's that gonna work? And, they might even have to call on some some private server research, maybe. I mean, I know they have a good relationship with an Australia's team, and uh, they, they've probably looked at some of the stuff as far as, like, their data, like their analytics on their servers to um, – and I think they should. I think they should use that stuff to make an educated decision. Yeah, you raise a really good point. Every – change you can possibly make it doesn't end at just that isolated change uh for example increased server population caps that would have to mean either sharding or dynamic response there is always uh, something else it's almost like a domino effect of implications you have to keep tweaking things to accommodate for these changes that's something you really really you really really or blizzard really needs to consider uh when when considering changes for classic wow i agree and the domino effect is so substantial that I think nobody's going to know everything, like how everything is going to affect everything. But one thing I took away from that all craft was it definitely seems like the players that have experienced vanilla since vanilla have a far better understanding of how those things work. So Esven, you brought it up, you know, bringing on Nostalrius or something like that. After that last all craft, I am very much for having some kind of small external consulting team on the payroll, off the payroll, it doesn't matter, of guys that really understand vanilla because if if the people that are working on vanilla right now just don't have that experience uh that you know private server experience and we're not supposed to talk about them but let's be realistic here if they don't have that experience they might not understand the intricacies of vanilla and might you know scuff the launch accordingly so definitely it would be very nice if we at least knew a couple of people were well versed on vanilla beyond just you know back in 2004 2005. and they could you mentioned the long beta phase s1 if they, if, I'm in, I'm in favor of them having a six month beta phase where they do stress tests, mm -hmm. and and if they want to try sharding, they can try sharding. If they want to try uh, a dynamic response, try it and see what works best. And I, I mean, I, I hope they end with sort of like a, 
uh, decisions that don't implicate much. But uh, I, I want them to see and test and then get players involved and see what works best, really. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, if, if they went into the beta and they almost treated it like a fresh, honestly, like an accelerated fresh mm -hmm. where they would go and say, hey, we're going to have a 10,000 invite, classic beta, 10,000 person, classic beta invite, and they go through and you have like a phase one, level one through 60, and just kind of see how it goes with uh, whatever they want to roll out. If they want to roll out 1.12 talents, kind of like how private service has done it in the past, or if they want to do 1.1, whatever, however they want to do that. Now, whenever it gets to 60, you have different phases of level 60 testing at different patches. So you might have, like allow for maybe two resets. I'm just like throwing stuff out there, like this is stuff I've thought about before. But like if you were to do something like two resets a week as opposed to one reset a week of MC and you have like MC like 1.4 patch talents and then you do 1.12 patch talents and you just you, you flip flop. Let's look at the data. How fast did they kill the bosses here? How fast did they kill the bosses there? How fast did the entire raid go? Or like how long did it take to complete the entire raid and so on? <clears throat> and, and really look at the, the little like the, the fine tuning the numbers through that I think it's going to be really important. Yeah, and I would almost, I would imagine, uh, I'm almost positive that they're going to do that stuff internally. But I think, like you said, having more people involved, having more players involved, more data they can gather, the better. But I, I would fully expect them to do sort of testing like that internally, or I would hope so. Exactly. I know a lot of people have been saying they don't want a beta. <laughs> um, you know, getting classic out is a priority, but, but getting a decent classic out is even a bigger priority. I don't know if we, uh, if we should rush it. There's so many things that you just have to get right. And while there's a lot of wiggle room, you just you don't want to mess up something that's going to destroy the entire experience. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's just, it, it's, it really makes you, I mean, we all wanted Classic for I don't know how long, right? For some people, for as soon as Burning Crusade came out, they wanted Classic a while back. Mm -hmm. If, you, I mean, you can want it as much as you want it, but then if you really sit down and, and start looking at, like, okay, how can they make this happen? Or in Blizzard's case, how can we make this work? How can we make this happen? You start to realize why it was probably so hard for them to actually get to the point where, like, okay, yeah, we're going to make legacy servers. We're going to make classic servers. And hopefully Burning Crusade servers and Wrath maybe after. But that's a different discussion. But I, I think that there is a lot of... There's a lot of thought and there's a lot of design and there's a lot of planning that really needs to go into this. And... That, I mean, that's probably why we haven't heard too much recently. There, there's going to be a, there's going to, it has to be premeditated. You can't just like throw something out there like, okay, let's get the release out as fast as possible, right? That's Absolutely. Long story short, Blizzard, hire the classic cast. We'll take care of everything. No changes all the way. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, we only charge 50 grand a month. I, I would imagine like as far as progress and updates, I'd imagine a lot of what they're working now very early on, early on in Classic WoW is uh, technical. Like, how, how can we get this to run on new software, new hardware, and not, uh, maybe they haven't even tackled the issue of uh, what patch we're running off of. Maybe they haven't even done that yet. It's still very sort of technical uh, in the trenches, uh, sort of boring work. You know, it's not really the big picture stuff yet. Uh, who knows? Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think you're absolutely right about that. I think uh, another thing that we talked about too on, on Allcraft was Q dodging. This was something that actually, it, it, this was towards the end of the, the, the Allcraft. This is a question that came up is like, how do you think Blizzard needs to approach Q dodging and, and kind of the issue with Q dodging? And there, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. There's people will go in and they'll, they'll we're talking about honor, honor grinding, we're talking about pre mates. So people will go in Alliance pre made versus Horde pre made, they queue up and somebody will see, like maybe one person joins the queue, and they're like, oh, it's so-and-so's pre-made, right? And in so-and-so's pre-made, well, we're gonna lose. We're, we're just gonna lose against that pre-made, so what's the point? That guy leaves, nobody else accepts the queue, and then the other team basically gets a free win. Or like, people will join, and then they'll get in there and they'll see like, oh, you know what, whatever, and they just AFK out, or, or they'll sit at the base and just wait. So there's a bunch of different ways that they, they do queue dodging. Um, this is something that actually is, is punishable <clears throat> on private servers. It's something that private servers actually see as it's, it's bad for the game. 
And I would, I mean, I, I expect Blizzard to do something about it too. It's, it's the exact same thing as one trading, in, in a sense. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's obviously not good for the game. Uh, but at the same time, you know, how do they enforce it? There, there's going to be so many things they're going to have to enforce. And we should probably talk about just enforcement as, as a whole. You've got queue dodging. You've got griefing. You've got, honestly, just, just communication. Like back in 2004 in, in the Barrens, you could get away with saying a lot of pretty nasty stuff. I'm not sure if Blizzard's going to, you know, I mean, I would expect them to be a lot more strict than they were back then. I mean, when it comes to, to win trading specifically, I think that's a TOS violation, right? Is it explicitly? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, actually. I, I have read it, but I don't remember. I don't know about TOS. Like, I, I understand both arguments for win trading and not just win trading. Uh, that doesn't happen as much as just rolling over in BGs if you know you're going to lose. That happens a lot. I mean, so if you're farming honor to rank up, your sole priority is uh, your biggest concern is is getting as much honor as you possibly can every hour. Mm -hmm. And so if you've, if you've queued into a pre that's better than yours and you just lose to them, you know you're going to lose. You've, you've seven times to two hours. Like, uh, I understand it, it's it's actually like technically beneficial for both of you, both pre premades to get in, get, to get in and out as fast as possible. To both, like both, both premades are getting a, more honor than if one pre-made or one one turtles or or uh, it, the game just kind of lingers on it's better to get in and out as fast as possible however it, it is like bad sportsmanship and bad for the game i think if you uh, if you team you're going to you know you're going to lose against just to completely roll over and do nothing like, i i i don't like that so i think I, I do think it should be uh, punishable i think private servers have done the right thing with punishing people for it the question is, is it going to be as big of a, I guess, as big of a, an occurrence on official? The thing about private servers is because the community, no matter how large it is, it's still relatively small, especially when you're talking about rankers. It's pretty easy to coordinate that kind of thing. But if you're talking about, you know, 50 plus vanilla servers with people scattered, you know, all across the different servers, how easy is it going to be to link up and, and coordinate, you know, win trading and stuff like that? I'm sure it'll happen on some servers, but will it happen on so many servers that Blizzard needs to step in? No, I mean, it, it, it depends on if there's cross-realm battleground. Up until, like, the last patch of Vanilla, there weren't cross-realm battlegrounds. Right. And so you knew everyone you were queuing against. You knew instantly, oh, we, we lose to these guys, we beat these guys. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't think win trading, like, win trading is not as much of an issue as just rolling over if you know you're going to lose, which I, I wouldn't call that win trading. It's just called efficient use of your time, right? Yeah. Uh, you wanna, if you know you're going to lose, you want to get in, get out, try to queue against another team that you know you can beat. I, I, I haven't experienced win trading as much as just rolling over. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I mean, just, just to that point, I remember, because I, I ranked for a little bit, and we were in pretty good pre-made, and we would go in, and we would get, like, six-minute AB wins pretty regularly. But it wasn't because of us just going in there and just, like, stomping them. It was us going in there, and they'd be like, oh, it's so-and-so, it's like so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so are in this group. This is this guy's pre-made. We'll just sit in the base. So yep. uh, yeah. where's the line? Because if you're if you're that good, are you going to get that much honor anyway? Are you gonna Are you gonna be at the top of the? Because it's it's all about competition. It's all about your standing at the end of the day, right? Because if there's if, if the rank one or the, or the number one standing guy, the guy who's going for GM has a million honor a week or three million honor a week. At the end of the day, if he's number one, he's number one. Yeah. So. I mean. I think it's one of those, uh, it's better to, to address it react, uh, reactively than proactively sort of thing. We'll see what happens, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, I think something else, and actually this is something that, you know, talking about like, oh, you see this guy, you see that guy. Um, kind of thinking about Stay Safe, something that you had talked about recently a lot on your streams is, is stream snipers <laughs> and griefing. <clears throat> and did you want to go into that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, I don't know if you you guys have probably streamed Vanilla WoW at some point. Uh, <laughs> only authentic, maybe, I don't only know. authentic vanilla footage. <laughs> only authentic vanilla footage. That's, That's right. Um, well, well, streaming Vanilla WoW, it's very hard to do. It's not a streamer-friendly game. I don't think it is at all. I think it will be very hard, especially if you have a ton of viewers. Even if you, there are a lot of big streamers I know uh that are going to be playing on pbe servers because they don't want to get ganked and like that's totally understandable i understand that because it sucks to get 
at a certain point, uh, you know, people say getting ganked is content. Like it's it's funny to get ganked. Yeah, I mean, maybe for 45 minutes, but after a certain point, you just want to play the game. That loses its appeal, and your viewers are going to get bored of uh, watching you just corpse run back for 10 hours a day. But even if you play on a PVE server, um, you can have people on your own faction or on the up on the opposite faction uh, kill every monster in a in a hundred yard radius. You won't you won't be able to get a monster tag. You'll never you'll never get XP. Uh, so so stream sniping it's not just a, a a matter of PVE server or PVP server. If if people want to snipe you and, and hinder your progress, they can do that regardless of what server type you're on. It, it's going to be a very hard game to stream. You're going to have streamers, especially giant big streamers, say. Uh, I can see it now, like the tweets uh, a year and a half from now. Hey guys, I'm going to take the day off. I just want to play the game. Like I just want to play the game yeah. in peace. I can already, I can already see people saying that. Well, dude, it's funny that you say that because whenever I started streaming, I didn't start streaming until April. Like I was already level 60. Like, I started raiding and then I started streaming, and this is before my ban on YouTube. Um, I would only stream initially. I would stream two days a week, two nights a week, and I would only stream my raids. I wouldn't stream any farming, I wouldn't stream any PvP or whatever, and I eventually added in more things. But even then, I was only really <laughs> streaming like three or four days a week because I had to take, I had to be off stream to farm. I tried farming stuff on stream and sometimes I would do like Dire Molly's jump runs or something like that. But I, I, I think that if you were to stream like people stream retail WoW, it doesn't work. Like you're saying, it's, it's not very streamer friendly. So it's not like I can just go around and, and if I'm playing on a PvP server, just stream wherever I want. Um, I do think even on a PvE server, how a PvE server works is like if you're in contested territory, you can't attack each other unless you're flagged. But right. that doesn't mean that you can't get attacked if you like have to run through a PvP zone or like a, like an opposing faction zone to get into a contested zone. Like you can still get flagged and then you have to wait five minutes till your flag drops. So like there's still going to be times where where you're going to be able to be attacked in a contested zone, but it's not going to be anything like a PvP server. And like you said earlier, as far as same faction griefing, I know this wasn't even whenever I was streaming. This was while I was leveling. I was trying to level an STV, and I'm a paladin, and I'm trying to run. I'm like, oh, there's a tiger. You know, run to the mob, and then there's a druid, and he just moon fires him. And it's like, okay, crap. So I turn. Yep. And then he moonfires the other one. And I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Like, I can't get any of these. So I gave up on that quest. I just left. Because, I, I mean, imagine if I was streaming, you know? that Like, moonfire, you yeah. can just tag everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, here's the thing about streaming, okay? I'll, let me. I want to dispel a couple of notions here. First and foremost, uh, the people that think they're going to get ganked so hard on launch and beyond that they're going to roll PvE servers... I got a message for you. First and foremost, if you're a streamer by occupation, naturally you're going to be playing the game 12 plus hours a day come classic launch. And guess what? Vanilla is like a 200 hour leveling journey. If you are somebody that plays 12 plus hours a day, believe me, the people that want to gank you aren't going to be able to catch up to you because you're always going to be ahead of the curve naturally. Plus, if you're a streamer, you probably are going to get access to the classic WoW beta. And as such, you're going to be able to prepare a leveling route that's going to allow you to get ahead of everyone else. On top of that, the only people that would actually be able to get ahead of you and gank you are private server players or players that already have so much experience in vanilla that they're going to be looking to make their own name in the new classic WoW world. And with all due respect, they don't give a shit about you. You know, no offense. So like, you know, the, the, the big names in, in the classic WoW world, the monkey newses and these guys, they're not going to stick around to gank you. They're busy leveling. And then all the scrubs that want to gank you, they're just going to fall behind because they can't play 12, 14, 16, 24 hours a day like you can. I, so, I don't, I, yeah. I, sorry, I, I don't think that stream sniping ends at level 60, though. The majority of your gameplay is going to be at that's level right, 60. That's right. It, I, it, I agree. It's a, it's a bad feeling uh, if you want to go farm monsters or run to a dungeon. Or do anything ever in the open world, knowing that there's people watching, ready to kill you, like like tons of people. Stream sniping is probably it'll, it'll be a more prevalent problem at, at level sixty than it will be while leveling. Yeah. I definitely agree at level sixty, but I feel like by then it's a completely different perspective. Because if you do get ganked at level sixty, at level sixty your objectives are, are what to, to you know get your like right at level sixty you want to get your uh, reputations exalted with Hydraxian, you want to do your two men quests, you want to basically get pre-read BIS. Uh, these things, 
things, it's so it's I'm not gonna say it's okay, but if you get ganked, there's a certain recourse for it. You've got other people at level 60 that can help out, and that could transform into like a faction wide war. Whereas during leveling, it's so much more annoying to get ganked because you actually have this tangible goal of reaching level 60. Whereas at level 60, you have so many more options of what you can do to fill that time that, you know, if you do get ganked, it's like I could just move on to the next thing. Or if you're a big streamer, you can be like, all right, we're going to knock these guys out of the park. Let's go take over, you know, crossroads or whatever. So there, there's a little bit more recourse, I feel, in that regard. I mean, what, what do you think about in the scenario? Let's say uh, Classic WoW has been out. For and uh, I want to make an alt. And now everyone is in full tier two. They have they have a level sixty, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm trying to level my alt while streaming. Uh, and someone's just perma camping me in, in full tier two gear. Like, what's the recourse there? In that scenario, that's a completely different scenario. I'm talking <laughs> exclusively about the launch and moving forward. So, like, uh, like a lot of our streamer friends, the really big ones that that want to roll PvP or roll PVE, I don't think they need to on that first character. And I think that they're actually compromising the, the I guess, the enjoyableness of their stream by doing so. I think the fears are a little bit overblown, especially when you take into account how long they'll be playing versus others. But on that second and third character, obviously, when people are already maxed at 60, uh, it's it's a completely different scenario. You probably want to roll a PVE in that in that situation. But it's really that first character that really matters, I think. Yeah, and and that's actually that's actually my my plan myself. I. Uh... I was talking about this before. My main is going to be on PvP. I'm going to make my main on PvP. I'm going to level 60. And then I'm going to make another character on a PvE server. But I, I probably am not, get, more than likely, not going to make another character on a PvP server. Uh, I'll probably just have the one. But I'm generally speaking, I've always been like a one character kind of guy. So mm -hmm. it's kind of... I'm really just going to be leveling a second guy just to play with more friends on PvE. That's, that's really the only reason I'll be playing that. But... Generally speaking, I've been a, a one paladin kind of guy, and I go and I'll, I'll level a 60, and that'll be my main, and I'll run my guild. But I do think, and, and this is like a general like rule of thumb, that, that I, I think that you shouldn't get any, like, there, there really shouldn't be like any special treatment for people streaming or whatever, but you don't want to go the other way with it and say that, like, oh, you're, you're getting punished for being a streamer. So at a certain point, ganking... Camping, it turns into griefing. And I do know in the past, like, Blizzard has had issues with people <laughs> griefing people for, like, if I yeah. go and, like, and I'm just camping somebody and, like you said, like, level 60, full tier 2 or whatever, and you're just camping, like, a level, you know, 28 guy in Duskwood for an hour. Yeah. You know, like, that's griefing, regardless of who it is, whether it's a streamer or not. So, right, exactly. Like, like, I do think there's a difference. I guess I want to clarify uh, for chat. I want to clarify how I feel. Like, I do think when you're a streamer, you take on uh, an extra level of risk. Like that's something you open yourself up to and that's fine. Um, because also as a streamer, you can benefit a lot from being a streamer in game. You can have people give you free things. Like it goes both ways, right? Yeah. It goes both ways. Um, exactly. I, I was just gonna however, say, oh, sorry, yes, sorry. I, didn't, I didn't mean to cut you well, off. I was gonna say, you're right. It, there's that and then there's, let me give you guys an example. Let's say I'm leveling or some guy, let's say, let's say I'm leveling as a veil, level 35. And uh, I'm trying to do my quests, and I'm streaming, and there's a guy that he, he kills me eight times. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a buddy standing on the, on the graveyard, so I can't graveyard spawn, and he kills me uh, every time I try to graveyard spawn. And this goes on for an hour and a half, just nonstop camping, griefing. I turn off the stream, or I just stop playing for a while, and I try to play off stream, and uh, they have me added on their friends list. And I, I'm done with Stranglethorn Vale because uh, I'm getting perma-camped there. And uh, I go to uh, Arathi Highlands to try to quest. I'm in Arathi Highlands now, and I'm there for five minutes, and uh, those, those same people come and do the same exact thing in Arathi Highlands. They make the game literally unplayable. Part of the game, like, it, it's literally unplayable at that point. It, right. if, I, if someone recognizes your name from, from being a streamer, even if you turn off the stream, they can still continue that behavior. At that point, I don't think that's, well, you took that on with being a streamer. I think that's actually harassment. Like, I, I would say that's probably player harassment, whether or not, uh, and that can happen to you even if you're not a streamer. That can happen exactly. even if you're not a streamer. That happens to people who aren't streamers. I would say at that point, that would probably, in my opinion, qualify as player harassment. Right. Exactly. Like targeted abuse, it's against the TOS. If it happens repeatedly, especially on stream, it's, it's a very bad look. And to be honest, I think, uh, you know, it, it would be a good idea to, to obviously ban a person that really violates it that much. But at the same time, like you, you guys got to understand something. Classic WoW is going to be like on the front page of, of Twitch. It's going to be everywhere when it comes out. It's going to be the biggest thing in the world. I think it'll break the website. It'll break the website. Yeah. 
how bad is it going to look if like the top 10 streamers in the classic wow section are just you know boom boom just getting camped over and over and over and over again they're they're reaching out to new audiences a lot of the audiences that follow these streamers were too young to play when vanilla was actually out yeah. they're looking at the game and thinking to themselves oh my god this looks like absolute you know dog poo yeah. like you, you got to understand that it, it makes the game look really really bad too so there definitely does need to be some enforcement i agree I think you're right. I mean, imagine Soda Poppin has 100,000 viewers. He's trying to play Classic WoW for the first two or three days. And uh, he literally, do, he just, he gets camped off the game. He either has to stop streaming or he says, you know what? I'm not going to play this game. Like, I'm not even talking about what us as players or how we think about it. How is Blizzard going to think about that? Okay, they have a guy that's advertising their game to 100,000 people. I think for that reason, it, it, if that's being questioned, if he's, if he's being camped off of their game, I think it's in Blizzard's interest to uh, try to try to stop that from happening. Yeah, I, I do think, I do think it's not going to be a, an issue initially. Whenever whenever the game launches, I don't think stream sniping, at least negative stream sniping from from the sense of getting ganked, is going to be a real issue. Um, I agree. Just because I everybody's going to be focused on leveling. But, um, like with any form of griefing, like there there is a line, you know, camping whatever. I mean, I know with me, like now. 500 viewers, 600 viewers pales in comparison to whatever those guys are going to get. I like I, I can guarantee you. Soda, Asmin, Lyric, like these guys are going to get over 100,000 viewers. I yeah. I would I would go as far as saying with all the big time streamers who have a history with World of Warcraft and specifically vanilla, like almost all those guys either either they're streaming or their their online gaming careers started with wow. So I would not be surprised to see it have close to a million views on Twitch. Like the WoW section or the classic WoW section or whatever they want to call it, like it's going to be close to a million views. And I, like, I honestly think it could be that high. Exactly. No, I completely agree. And like speaking of those streamers, like another thing that you, that you have to understand, like at the end of the day, if the server population cap is 3,000, dude, you might not even get that many people that know who you are, not necessarily right. know who you are, but like... Uh, yes. dip, yeah, depending on how quickly servers fill up, depending on how many servers Blizzard provides, I mean, all of this, all these are variables that are going to determine how much ganking takes place. And again, just just knowing Stay Safe, for example, the guy's got like a 23-hour 1 to 30 route. Um, and obviously, by the time Classic rolls out, you know, all these big streamers are going to be practicing on the beta. I just don't see anybody that, that wants to gank them going to be as skilled or prepared enough to be able to catch up with them. Uh, the only people that are going to be able to do it again are the people that already have so much experience that they'll probably be concerned with themselves more than the other streamers. At least that it's just a guess. I do agree. Definitely the best way if you're a streamer or anyone or anyone and you want to avoid getting camped or griefed when you're leveling an early classic wow during the launch, your best solution is just level faster. Yeah. Just level faster than everyone else. Because you're right. The people, the other people, they're leveling fast in, in your in your leveling speed. Uh, they're concerned about their own character progression and not killing other people. That's very true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I also think something else to point out is that you're going to have people that are on your side as well that are going to want to come defend you. Like I know there's there's guys who stream Classic WoW in the past and they'd be leveling and. Do you have echo? I, I think you might have echo right now. Oh Jesus! Oh boy. <laughs> echo, echo. <laughs> How about that? Is that better? One person said it was okay, so I think I'm. I was, is that better? Okay, good, good. Okay, so I would go in. I would go in, and I would go. Like I'd be level sixty, and I'd see like some some level. He'd be leveling at like level thirty or whatever, and just be getting camped by, camped by like some loser level sixty who has nothing else to do. So I would mm -hmm. go and I would kill that guy, and he would like he would one shot the guy whatever, and then I would go kill like a level sixty mage, and then the mage would have to run back, and then I would resurrect him. I'd resurrect the, the guy leveling. And then I would just sit there and do that for like a few hours because I was bored and I had nothing to do. So like I was trying to like be the good guy in that situation. But at least like that guy could level. You're going to have people on your side too. So there, it, it goes both exactly. ways is basically what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Yeah. I, I do think like uh, you can be a street, you can be anyone and have, it, it, you can have 10 people trying to protect you. And all it takes is like a level 60 rogue to pop out and backstab you, boom, you're dead. Like, it, it, I, I do think it is very hard to uh, bodyguard someone who is trying to be sniped. Uh, don't you think that? Yeah, it's hard. But I, I think there will be a number of people doing it. 
like Florisic in chat who said he was going to do that. <laughs> Dude, just t pop on those, you know, invisibility detection goggles, surround yourself with a swarm of fanboys, you're good to go, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So, um, I think from there, is there anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Anything else you guys wanted to bring up from the last all craft or anything else that's been on your guys' mind? Um, I did want to talk about the communities thing. Yes, that's quick. right. You mentioned that before. Um, yeah. Do you want to go ahead and start? Go ahead and start on that because we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. So uh, for those that have been playing the BFA beta or watched Mr. GM's video from the other day, there's a new feature coming in BFA called communities. Now, this feature is essentially almost a native built-in Discord provider in World of Warcraft. There are two different types of communities that you can make. You can make a community just for the WoW community community essentially it's like a discord channel for people in world of warcraft on your faction and you can invite anybody across any server to join that discord channel slash community we're just going to call it discord channel because it's a lot easier you know to understand then there's the second type of community which the which is the one that's very concerning you can create a cross platform community going to any of blizzard or activision's games that again allows you to communicate in a built-in Discord channel, regardless of faction, regardless of server, regardless of even the game you're playing. Obviously that becomes very problematic in terms of vanilla, um, especially because it seems like this is a corporate wide initiative that Activision Blizzard is rolling out. Do they plan to introduce this in classic? And if they do, that's probably going to have huge ramifications on things like the Ngoro uh, uh, cartels and the Devil's Sword Mafias and the Black Lotus uh, uh, node farming and world boss camping. Cross-faction collusion will become rampant, and uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, off the top of that, I think I think that if it's going to be there, it's going to be there. I, I understand that Discord exists. I understand all that stuff, and I, I've been talking about it for months. Like I, I, I've been talking about this on streams for months. But like, BattleNet needs to be done the right way, and mm -hmm. and BattleNet, as we know it right now, you know, you can you can whisper somebody who's across your your faction on the same server. You can you can talk to anybody basically. Yeah, I can even literally go right-click somebody and add them as a friend who's on the opposing faction. And I think stuff like that, it, it needs to be limited. It needs to be highly, highly limited. Now, whenever you're talking about communities, now you're opening up a whole other can of worms. And like you said, it's, it's basically like Discord in-game. So Discord is, is, is fine. You at least have to share a server with somebody who's on an opposing faction to be able to talk to them. But the big issue is, is enabling that sort of cross-faction collusion. Like, like, okay, you can do it. I get that you can do it anyway, but whenever Blizzard is like, here you go, like, it, it's not good, you know? Exactly. Yeah, I agree. This is something that is going to happen, the cross-faction collusion. It's going to happen. It does happen on private servers. I don't think that Blizzard should encourage it or, or uh, on their own. Mm -hmm. I expect them to either try to stop it or to do nothing about it. I feel this the same way about uh, WoW tokens. I wish that they would, uh, instead of just sort of saying with like gold sellers, man, stopping gold selling and gold buying is really, really hard. So you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna sell it ourselves. Like uh, I wish that they would either just do nothing or try to stop it themselves and not uh, uh, provide it <laughs> provide it on their own. Same same kind of thing. I feel exactly. the same way. I completely agree with Stay Safe. And like, especially when you consider that cross-faction collusion was against the original TOS and there's a specific line about it. How can you say it's against the rules and then create a feature that encourages that type of behavior? And like, like again, a lot of people say Discord exists and people are going to be doing this anyway. There's varying degrees of offense. I mean, would you rather have 90% of people doing something wrong or like 30% of people doing something wrong? Obviously, right. it's going to create a different you know environment on the server. Right. You want you want to minimize it as much as possible. Right. And there's also things like there's stuff that just didn't exist in, in Classic. Like in, in original retail vanilla WoW, like I don't remember, at least not on my servers, I don't remember knowing about, at least knowing about like a Devil Sworn Mafia or anything like that. This kind of stuff was developed out of years and years of the same people playing on the same servers and getting to know each other and wanting to play different factions. Hey, I'm going to roll this, I'm going to roll that. On PvP servers, on a private server, this, this is something that you can do now in retail, but if you play PvP, you can make Horde and... Uh, alliance characters originally you couldn't do that mm -hmm. so just just that plus also the fact that because it's it's illegal it's free people will just make multiple accounts and they might have like a level 60 this guy on one account level 60 alliance on that account horde and alliance two accounts two level 60s and it's no big deal that kind of stuff didn't really happen as much back in the day 
Yeah, there's a very big difference between pay to play servers or pay to play games and free to play games. On free to play games, I think you tend to have more, you know, sort of like toxic rule breaking communities because they know if they get banned or if they get reprimanded, it's not a big deal. They can just make a new character. They don't really lose very much. They don't have money in the game, mm -hmm. uh, skin on the game, I guess people say. If, re if Blizzard comes out and says, hey, this is the rule, we don't want this happening, the majority of people will not do it because they don't want to risk their, their actual official account. There, I think there will be, if Blizzard, if Blizzard wants this to be the case, there can be a, a different change in player behavior between private servers and retail WoW, or, or classic WoW, I mean. I completely agree. <laughs> and uh, you brought up a very good point as well, as fan about, you know, this behavior ha happening almost exclusively on private servers. Uh, as a result, you know, like you said, there's so many, there's going to be so many random people on the servers that we decide to play on and that you guys decide to play on that it's gonna be a lot harder to organize these groups. And if it's a very small portion of people exploiting this behavior, guess what? You can ban them, you can find them. It's very easy to know, you know, who's participating in this kind of behavior, who's in the Devil Storm Mafia, as you see it, it's obvious. And again, if Blizzard bans it, instead of implementing the communities and enabling it, I think it's gonna to lead to a much better experience. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, you know, another thing that comes up is like, well, communities weren't, 1.1 1, 1 .1 to 1.12 so it's not vanilla is it really an issue and i think that's not the point the point is that it's in the it's it's in it's part of battlenet and whenever they talk about blizzard polish i think battlenet is blizzard polish i think that's what they're talking about and exactly. yeah yeah and, and i think that um i think that's something else that people need to realize is well i guess it's called blizzard launcher now or something it's not actually called battlenet anymore but we still call it battlenet the fact that they put call of duty on the Battle.net launcher, I don't think, I, I, I have two thoughts about it. One, is it a really big deal if that's on there and it just has more exposure to the game? Is it a big deal? Or it just makes you realize, okay, well, like they're tr what they're trying to do with the Battle.net launcher, are they trying to take it and just make it like its own platform, almost like Steam? Because that's what I get out of it. And if they're trying mm -hmm. to make it its own platform like Steam and then and then put in the communities and all this stuff, that's just, again, like they're trying to implement Discord, Steam elements, and kind of try and do their own thing. Uh, kind of similar to Origin did the same thing with EA. Or EA did the same thing with Origin, excuse me. Um, I don't know, just things to think about. Some things that have been on my mind lately. So. I agree. And, uh, you know, they want to create that ecosystem of their games. They want you to bounce from game to game. They don't want you to leave that that Blizzard and Activision atmosphere. They want they want you to buy products across platform. But again, it goes back to I think what I said earlier. This is why you need a couple of people. I'm I'm not I'm going to say consultants, but this is why Blizzard needs to have that private server perspective at least understand it. This is something that I could see goes over the head of a lot of people that have never played on private before. They don't know what the mafias are. They don't understand how cross faction collusion works. It's just another example of something that, that you really need to, to have experienced it um, before you can design around it. And I hope Blizzard has people on the team that have experienced it before they make such crucial design decisions as implementing a corporate-wide initiative into all of their games, including one that could be potentially destroyed because of it. Mm. Well, and they've talked about in the past. Uh, I think Jay Allen Brack said in an interview that, that they'd be willing to work with uh, Demon and Viper if, uh, if, if they would want to. They'd, they'd be willing to take their input, so they're, nice, probably, they're probably open to that. Good idea. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, I kind of, I kind of want to go ahead and move into some Q and A. Is there anything you guys want to talk about? I mean, it sounds good. Let's do some Q and A. Okay, guys. So, um, if you guys want to do some Q and A, where we we wanted to do this live class cast and uh, take some questions from you guys. See what you guys have to say. I, I know there's a lot of questions, and uh, even in Allcraft, we got a lot of questions that, that we couldn't get to um, this last week. But uh, I, I saw some questions earlier as well, but I, I didn't get a chance to write them down or anything. So if you guys want to go into anything in the chat, just go ahead and at SFAN, at tips, at stay safe, ask whatever you want. So just make sure we see it. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Okay, I like this one. I like this one. Uh, Doyton, discuss selling tokens in game. Blizzard won't give gold sellers the capital ones again. Okay, so you're talking about the WoW token. What are what are your guys' thoughts on the WoW token? I, I mean, I I've said mine a hundred times maybe, but if you guys want to go into what your your thoughts are on the WoW token, it's kind of like I said. I guess I'll kick it off. I mean, I understand that completely shutting down and cracking down on gold buyers, gold sellers, everything. I 
big monumental task because it is it is a, a literal a multi-million dollar business gold selling and gold farming um but i i would rather them shut down let's, let's say let's say they have a really hard time and they can only shut down 10 percent of it and 90 percent of it leaks through if they can only shut down 10 percent and catch 10 percent of the people that are involved in it that's still better uh than uh than them offering it on their own i would rather them mm -hmm. take a try make an effort then just throw their hands up and give up and, and do it on their own that's I, how i feel yeah, i absolutely agree and uh it's very simple if blizzard creates a cash shop with a wow token for classic classic fails period that you just you alienate the core audience so much i don't know about you guys would you play it i wouldn't play it at that point i'm not gonna lie it, gold is such an important part of vanilla and such an important part of the progression experience that if you're just able to buy it, it destroys some of the most meaningful experiences in WoW, like in your mount, you know, even just farming consumables, getting all your abilities. It takes away so much of what vanilla was about that if they just casually roll over and let it slide, I think it hurts the game so much. So I agree, you should fight it tooth and nail um, however you can. If something slides through, then so be it. Things slid through back in vanilla, but at least take a stance against it, at least ban people for, for, for you know, engaging that kind of behavior, set a precedent, make people scared, put the fear in God uh, to people that, that, that are actually going to engage in this type of behavior, at least minimize it. Well, right. And, you, go ahead. You, you, I was going to say, you have to imagine Blizzard, multi, Blizzard Activision Blizzard, multi-billion dollar company. They, they, they're probably, if anyone, if anyone can, t t can take a dent in gold selling, gold buying, it's probably Blizzard. Like they're, they're gold buying, gold selling, trading, detecting software. Uh, it's got to be the best out there. I think that I, I, I have faith in them uh, that they will do a good job. Yeah, I, I think that I agree. Uh, I think that one of the big things, too, is is that it makes it very pay to win. Like, I know if I can if I can hit level 60 and whip out the credit card and basically go buy myself a Lionheart helmet, if I can go buy my my epic mount, it's those are those are key things to the game that gives me a, a significant advantage. Like, I'm, I'm already getting my pre raid bis. I'm getting my my epic mount for PVP. That's going to help me in my honor grind if I want to rank to 14. That's going to help me in farming raid mats, uh, herbs, mining, any sort of gathering that I want to do in the open world. Uh, yeah, I, I just think right. it's it's probably bad. Uh, it's probably bad for the game. Um, just to, just to yeah. have that at all. But I, I know that you can't uh, you can't stop all of it. Like people are going to be selling gold. I get that. You can't stop all of it. And I know that was like the, the WoW token was their answer. Well, people are going to buy gold anyway. Why not just give it out? And I'll tell you this, when I play Legion, dude, I don't have, gold means nothing to me. I went Civ, okay, Civ is, has been streaming, Civ HD has been streaming WoW recently, he's a friend of ours, and he put the, he got the one ring, he was, he was streaming Legion, he got the one ring while fishing, and he put it on the gold for, or put it on the auction house for 100,000 gold, and I just, I was like, I have nothing to do with gold, gold is worthless to me in Legion, so I just went to the auction house and bought it, because I thought it was funny, you know, I, I spent all my gold, and I have not been hurting for gold, I have not had any, just because of what I personally do in Legion, I don't even need it. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's worthless to me. Right. And in I mean, retail, or in, sorry, in vanilla, it's so different. Like, I'm, I'm scratching tooth and nail, scratching the bottom of my bag, selling freaking old gear that I have to, like, repair my gear. <laughs> like, it's that bad. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, gold scarcity in vanilla WoW is a very formative experience. Like, it definitely influences everyone's player behavior. You know how when you're running around uh, vanilla Azeroth and you see people killing monsters? And running to dungeons and working together and forming groups and they're they're out engaging in the world 99 percent of the time it's because they're trying to get gold they're, they're out there playing the game engaging with other players and engaging with the environment trying to get gold if you give if you let people buy gold with real world money that's that leads to people afk and iron forge complaining they have nothing to do right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> i agree yeah. um I, I like this question here from sansi one yes i was gonna say yeah. Do you think the horde to alliance ratios on classic servers will be as severe as live servers? Should Blizzard do something to control this? Well, I guess first and foremost, I don't think it's going to be as bad for a couple of reasons. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, when it comes to PVE, typically, um, alliance do, do have somewhat, you know, they have an advantage over horde in many ways. However, when we're talking about classic WoW, I feel like because of the monumental importance of the game's return and just how much you know, people have been looking forward to this for so long. I can first see people kind of foregoing the whole complete min-max experience, at least a little bit, to pick their favorite races. 
Um, I, I do think that's going to happen because it just takes so long to get to level 60. If you don't like the race you're playing or if you're playing a faction just to get that, you know, those extra blessings of might or whatever, it, it's, it's not really worth it on a fulfillment level. So I don't think it's going to be that bad. Um, however, you know, as it was back in the day, I don't think Blizzard really, really touched uh, faction balancing. Personally, I really don't think they should because at the end of the day, you know, as strange as it sounds, some people like being the underdog on servers. Some people like playing on servers that are dominated by another faction. Personally, I know that the server that, that I want to play on, I'm trying to make sure that it's a little bit balanced. I think it's more fun that way. But uh, for Blizzard to step in and tell people you can only roll Alliance or you can only roll Horde, I, I don't know. I just, I don't like that, that you know, yeah. I just don't like that interjection. You know what I mean? Well, from, from what I remember, Blizzard's answer to this back in the day, they did two things. They started opening up free uh, server transfers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they, I remember they, if I, if I remember correctly, they gated these free server transfers towards the end of vanilla um, by faction, because I went mm -hmm. from Alliance Illidan to Alliance Kel'Thuzad in like mid to late 2006. I think it was, I can't remember the exact date, but I think it was after the Nax patch, I went to Alliance Kel'Thuzad. I used to be Alliance Illidan prior to that. And that was one. The other thing they did was with the 1.12 patch, they introduced the battle groups and the, the cross realm stuff. So the idea behind the battle groups is they calculated these battle groups based on the population of all the Alliance and all the Horde, and they tried to basically put together battle groups with roughly even uh, Horde to Alliance ratio. And I don't remember what class cast this was, but it, it might have been Stay Safe. Like, the, one, of, one of the first few class casts, we talked about the 1.12 patch and how, like, I, I, don't, I don't like cross-room battlegrounds. I don't like that. I don't like yeah. battle groups. I don't yeah. like that stuff. But Stay Safe brought up a really good point in that it, if it gets to the point where it was in vanilla, where... People were sitting in like freaking 30 minute queues, and then the like, let's say Horde would have a 30 minute queue, Alliance would have like an instant queue for a battleground. It might be a necessary evil that they eventually do have to implement into Classic. And that's something that Stacey brought up, and as much as I, I, I like, I hate to agree with that, but I think it might be, I think you might be right on that, because I, I really don't like battle groups. I don't like them. Yeah, and I mean, e even then, like, that's not the only solution. Uh, if you have a 30 minute queue you just have to farm honor different ways first off your your factions brackets will be lower so you won't even be expected to farm as much honor even though you'll probably be be farming for the same amount of time like still 18 hours a day or whatever pushing it hardcore you'll just have less honor you'll just have to farm in different ways uh, open world pvp uh you know dungeon entrance camping there's a question here from uh MSO, what do you think of bounty hunting sites slash cults for this game that will reward stream snipers big money? Uh, well, if, if there's real money involved, absolutely not. I think any sort of uh, real money trading, real world training uh, is absolutely should not be allowed. The great thing about games in general and World of Warcraft especially is that uh, your real your real world socioeconomic background, if you're rich, if you drive a Bugatti around and you make 10K a day, or if, uh, if you uh, work, you know, you wash dishes and you do whatever, right? Um, the great thing about this game is that when you log in the game, we're all we're all relatively on the same footing. All of that is left out in the real world, and we're all on the same footing. So any any time real money is brought in the game, WoW token, <laughs> bounty hunting sites like that where you're paying paying people to to kill whoever, uh, absolutely not. That should be bannable. Mm -hmm. I agree. Here's another good one, by the way, um, uh, from Zonin. Uh, wait, no. Oh, yeah, this one's pretty good. What are your guys' most valued top three things to do as soon as Classic hits? Mm. Okay. Uh, as soon as Classic hits? Or, like, as soon as you reach a certain point? Because I, I think for me, I mean, the number one thing is going to be... Well, okay, if you're getting real nitty-gritty with it, I got to pick my server. I mean, it's... it's I, I got I to gotta pick a server and I got to have my name. And And what I mean by that, like... I remember I did Project 70, and I didn't have the name S-Fan, I'd quit. <laughs> like, I just didn't want to play. <laughs> like, it's, like, that big of a deal to me. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to announce what server I'm on until my character's created. And then... Uh, so name race, one. Sir, choose a server, get logged in, pick the name, and then after everything's done, I'm then going to announce and, and tell my... Uh, what is going to be my guild. Like, hey, guys, here's where we're playing. So that's that's if I had to pick three things, like in, in getting real precise with it, that's what I'd say. 
Um, yeah, I mean, for me personally, pretty much the same thing. Uh, but, you know, just rush to 60. Rush to 60. I don't do professions while I'm leveling. Just get to 60 as soon as humanly possible. Farm this, then do professions. I mean, that first, that first month, is gonna be insane, man. Mm -hmm. Like, especially on a PvP server, you're gonna have to stay ahead of the game. We talked about streamers a little bit. If you do plan on streaming, it's fine. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Oh, we bugged out. I think I lost you guys. I yeah. lost you guys. You good? Are we oh, good? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, sorry, yeah, I, yeah, the tips. I think my computer right. like froze for a second. Oh, uh, no problem. Um, well, I was just saying like, uh, it's really important, especially on those, if you're a streamer, uh, to rush to 60 as soon as possible waste no time lollygagging so for me it's primarily going to be just to get to level 60 and then after that we'll see what happens yeah i think you're right leveling fast uh my plan like i've put a lot of thought in this i will my goal is to get 60 within eight real life days um like within eight days of server release uh level 60. Ooh. i will then uh second piece is level um engineering and leather working and then uh can you guess where i'm going to I'll be an undergrowth creator. Yeah, that's where I'll be. Yeah. All right, uh, everybody in the chat who's going to be rolling horde come classic. Wow, you think we're going to let stay safe get to level sixty in eight days? Let me see those, please. Absolutely not. Not eight days. Not even eight months, buddy. You're going to be chilling, dude. Okay, you're going to be chilling. I'll be perma stuck. Oh boy. <laughs> 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 so okay. uh, there's another question earlier. I'm trying to scroll back up here. Um, Dude, I, I don't know why. I'm sorry, guys. My computer is freezing a little bit. I, I don't know what my deal is. Let me let me close out of some stuff. We're we're getting effed a little bit. Give me, give it's me freezing. Here. Should yeah. warm it up. Yeah, frick. It's, <laughs> it's fricking. That's what that's what my computer's doing. I don't know what the deal is. I have a really good computer, so it shouldn't uh, be happening. For horde players, I call them HK scouts. HK scouts. Oh. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> F's in chat. Are we good? Are we live? Uh, no, we're live, but uh, there seems to be some other issues, and I'm, uh, I don't know if I have. Being targeted and censored by yeah, Blizzard. Yeah, we're, we're being targeted and censored. So that's, that's what's happening. We're being targeted and censored. Okay, hopefully that works. I, I closed I closed a bunch of stuff. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, it's a live show. Hey, so you know what's funny, dude? I was watching I was watching one of the all crafts, and the, some I think Rich's computer like something happened like he, he had to restart his computer. And chat like was freaking out. Like, oh, it's broken. It's broken. It's like, dude, it's a live show. Like stuff happens. So I don't know. I just thought it was funny, just because yeah. like you, you know, it's you know, it is what it is. Um, this is a good one. Uh, and and I think stay safe. You're you're the you're the leveling master. Uh, how important is it to plan out a questing path, or can someone reach sixty by just going with it as they level? That's what Elvin says. And stay safe. You want to start that one? Yeah, sure. Uh, I guess I'll say, who here is going to be playing classic? Wow, uh, it's. It's your first time playing. If, if, if it's your first time playing Vanilla WoW, I would recommend going slow, enjoying the game, leveling professions, making friends, doing dungeons, finding a guild, like really, really just play the game and enjoy it. I wish I could uh, wipe, on, wipe my memory clean and uh, replay the game for the first time because it's yeah. awesome. That first time you log in is totally awesome. Uh, yeah. But if you wanna like perform at a high level and, and go for server stuff or start ranking, as soon as you can, or farm as much gold as you can, or, or whatever, uh, it all starts with leveling fast. And there's two ways to level fast, or get into 60 as fast as possible. The two ways, uh, play more than other people, just play a lot, play a ton. A vanilla WoW really rewards time investment. Uh, you're gonna realize that when you start playing, it really rewards time investment. Not quite as much as a game like, you know, old school RuneScape, but still, it still does reward time investment uh, more than a lot of other games. And uh, the second way to level quickly is to have a premeditated route and always, uh, when, you're, when you're leveling, always know where you're going next. You don't wanna have any periods where like, ah oh, man, where do I need to go next? I'm out of quests, I don't know what to do. You always wanna know what to do and have a sort of a premeditated plan. Definitely, it's very important. Exactly. <clears throat> so for, and on, oh, go I'm ahead, sorry. sorry. Uh, I was just gonna say like, and on the subject of like leveling for new players, the most important thing, and the thing that I know I made a mistake of back in the day, and I'm sure a lot of people made that same mistake back in 2004, 2006. One thing, uh, especially if you're used to playing Cataclysm later, uh, that did not exist in Classic WoW and Vanilla WoW was linear quest hubs. 
you're going to feel obligated or you're going to feel like, you know, you should be able to, to get to a certain level within a certain zone in vanilla. That's just going to be your natural, you know, instinctive response because you're so used to playing the modern game. In vanilla, it wasn't really that way. Um, you're going to be an STV, for example, for a couple of levels. Then you're going to run out of quests. And your next you know, available yeah. quest is going to be like five or six levels higher than you. You're going to have to make a decision. Do I grind? The next couple of levels or do i take the trek to you know arathi highlands or desolus or wherever to to finish off uh, the other levels and kind of fill in the gaps definitely be open-minded to traveling and understand kind of how all the different zones work around you especially the level uh the level ranges of each zone i think that's going to help you a lot you know on your questing mm -hmm. now for me personally elvin i uh the last time i leveled the 60 i just i coasted i had fun with it I just did whatever I wanted to do, and um, that resulted in me hitting 60 in five weeks. Uh, like, I mean, I, I took five weeks to level to 60 the last time I did it. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? So, I, <laughs> I, again, it was just a lot of fun, relaxed. But you had casual. fun, though. That's, that's the most important thing. You had fun, yeah. for real. It's a yeah, game. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, did a lot, I did a lot of PvP. I mean, I can tell you guys, like, some of you guys who watch my streams regularly or or uh, watch my old YouTube content uh, from back in the day. By the way, you should follow all of us or sub to us on YouTube. It's, uh, you, you can see it in the, uh, under, underneath our, our little panels here, Tips Out Baby, S Fan TV, and Stay Safe TV. But I, my first, technically my first stream, whenever I was first like trying to you know, mess with stuff and see like, okay, I wonder how this works with YouTube, whatever. Um, I, it, was me, it was me and my buddy Dracova and we were level 30 some paladins and there is a mine in South Shore there's a mine in South, or not in uh, uh, Hillsbrad. Hillsbrad, excuse me, in Hillsbrad to the west of South Shore, and it's a horde questing area. But the NPCs in there are friendly to Alliance. So what we did, <laughs> there were a bunch of horde groups in there, and we were healing the quest mobs. And we would go, like, it'd be like a cave. So, like, we'd be at the top, and they'd be down here, and then we'd be healing them from up top, and they'd be like, what the frick is going on? Or, like, a frost mage. <laughs> a frost mage would try and frost over them, and then I would just click and cleanse, or uh, blessing of freedom them. So then they would run and then daze them, and the other guys would catch up, and they'd kill the frost mage. <laughs> and we'd go blessing of might. We'd do all kinds of stuff, dude. It was so funny. It was so freaking funny. Like, that's, that's the kind of stuff I really miss. Uh, is that griefing? Maybe, but <laughs> that's, not, that's not the point. It was really, really fun, and, and, and that's, uh, that's the kind of stuff I did while leveling to 60 the first time. So I, uh, I don't know. I mean, you could, do it, you could do it either way. You could do it either way is kind of my point. Do you yeah. get flagged on PvE servers for attacking those guys? That's a good question. I don't know. I've never played PvE, so I don't know. That's right. I want to know something right. similar. I've seen this done on PvE servers. There's a really hilarious video. Um, let's say there's a quest to kill a wolf, and you're a horde player, and you try to go kill this wolf. What an alliance hunter can do is uh, go tame a wolf that, will, that looks exactly the same, and uh, and have the wolf just like stationary in the forest or whatever. And a horde player can run up and innocently uh, attack this wolf that's actually a hunter pet, <laughs> and yeah. you'll get flagged, and then the hunter can just come out and kill you, or the or the wolf the the hunter pet will just kill you. There's a couple of videos like that. It's absolutely hilarious. It's really good. It's really good. It's easy to get baited, man. Like even just like rolling over somebody, like stacking on him or stacking on his mob, he accidentally presses the action bar one extra time and he's flagged. You know? Uh, yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, Serendipity is a really good question yeah, about the, the honor system. Actually. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so, so Serendipity wants to know uh, if we want the honor system out at launch or a couple months after, or, yeah, so in Vanilla WoW, I think it wasn't until month four, month four, which would have been February 2005, I think, when the honor system was introduced. Prior to that, there was no, you couldn't even farm honor, you couldn't rank, you couldn't grind. And then even then, when the honor system was added on month four or five, I think, and there were no battlegrounds. So this is the era of of Tarn Mill versus South Shore or Blackrock Mountain honor farming because there were no battlegrounds. And then a couple months after that, battlegrounds were added. I personally, well, I, I'll let you guys go ahead. What do you guys want? Battlegrounds or no, or, or honor or honor or no at the start? Um, I, I've, so, so I was actually, I was talking to, to my, my French tribe about this um, for quite a bit a while back. And I thought, no, I thought I'd just kind of let it play out as it was. And what he was saying and, and he's a more hardcore player. I mean, he was a Gen 1 ranker. And 
he was saying that he thinks that there's not going to be enough to do. He thinks the opposite of what Saren. Saren thinks there's too much to do at the beginning. He thinks that there wouldn't be enough to do if that uh, they they didn't have the honor system on the launch, which was. To me, that's kind of surprising, but that's that's a different type of player. And it's something that, I, I think we talked about this, uh, again, I think Asmongold brought this up in the last AllCraft, was, do you want to cater to the, the, to the top 1%? Like, at a certain point, exactly. like you're going to be yeah. doing this or that. And I think maybe for the more average player, there might be a lot to do at launch. But for a Gen 1 ranker, like, that's all you know. Like, it's just like, I just, you know, very, very... Uh, <laughs> That's all I do. Like, I just go rank for, I hit 60 as fast as I can, and I rank for three months, and I get Grand Marshal. You know, that's, yeah. that's what a Gen, Ran, Gen 1 ranker does. They get two million honor a week, yeah. and they don't sleep, and all that stuff. Um, yeah. I don't know. For me personally, it could go either way. I, I don't really care either way. Um, I think not having the honor system at the launch kind of helps to, uh, maybe, maybe indirectly helps promote you doing more, like, fun type things, more... Uh, world PvP type stuff, stuff like the 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 Hillsbrad mine that I was talking about, stuff like that is is more prevalent probably. Whenever there's no honor system, because it's just you just go do things because you love to do those things. Whenever you have the honor system in, you're adding in. Well, here's another thing: if you add in the honor system, that means you're adding in the honor gear earlier too. That's something else I, I didn't really think about until just now. So if you have the honor yeah. gear available earlier, then now you're affecting. I mean, you could have rank 14 gear in MC, right? Yeah, that, that's my big problem with it. That's my big yeah. problem. People complain about vanilla raids being too easy. And uh, if you have, I mean, you, you could have an entire raid roster full of rank 14 melee DPS by the time Blackwing Layer comes out or, yeah. or by, by month five or six when you're, when you're farming Molten Core. Having, having that much gear on your players by the time Blackwing Layer comes out super, super trivializes the content. And you're right. Uh, I think any time, uh, as far as like balancing the game or catering the game to uh, which demographic should you cater to? Mm -hmm. The 1% or the 99%? And I, I think it's probably better to cater to the 99% as as frustrating as that might be to the top no life players, uh, mm -hmm. of which uh, I am one. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And uh, just to clarify real quick, just I know there are a couple of people that are new to vanilla here. So basically, when vanilla launched, there was no honor system. What do they mean by honor system? Yeah, a way to accrue honor and spend it on something, uh, to acquire ranks. In vanilla, the higher rank you get, uh, the more PvP gear you unlock, for example. So that should not be confused with the Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds debuted about a month after the a month or two after the honor system launched in vanilla. So I think what, what the question was is, do you think that the honor system, not the Battlegrounds, just the honor system should be available at launch? I personally agree with uh, with my cohorts over here. I don't think it should be. And you know, beyond just the reasons they described, which I agree with all of them, um, the the very fact that the honor system launching is content, and it's like an event, and you know, it's a lot cooler in my opinion to launch with you know the base features of vanilla. Obviously, no changes, but then when you create something like the the honor system launch date, that's something to look forward to. That's something to hype up. That's something that, you know, two weeks beforehand, we're all going to be like in game, like, oh, my God, I can't wait till this comes in. And I can't wait. Where are we going to start yeah. farming on or, you, you know, which content. exactly spread out the content a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, ultimately, I think that's going to be more enjoyable in the long term. Yeah, I like that, too. I like that, too. Uh, Zephy was asking, uh, this is a pretty good one. Zephy, would you want classes to be balanced more towards the way they were in Burning Crusade? I am, uh, that's how the classes should have been at launch for Classic. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm assuming he means like like 1.12 to help players actually have the play style to choose rather than be stuck in a role they don't want to play. I knew some Warriors and Priests that played back in Classic that didn't want to tank or heal, but they stayed on those tunes. So I don't know if you're talking about... If you're talking about actual Burning Crusade or like towards Burning Crusade as in 1.12, I, I don't think it should be like... I, I mean, it just no changes, right? 1.1 to 1.12, keep it there. Vanilla's vanilla. Um, but as far as like, do you want 1.12 talents or do you want 1.1 talents? My personal preference is that it could go either way. I do think that if they decide to do the 1.12 talents, which might honestly actually be best for the game, is for them just to do the 1.12 talents. Um, and whenever people say 1.12 talents, they're not necessarily, it's not so much the 1.12 patch that changed everything. It's everything that changed leading up to the 1.12 patch. So that means the, the you know, 
Druid reworked, the Mage reworked, the Rogue Weaker, every single class got reworked. Warrior reworked in 1.6, Paladin reworked in 1.9. All those things combined whenever you say 1.12 patch. So for me personally, as a Paladin player, uh, uh, if you ask a lot of Paladins back in the day, a lot of them complained. They said the 1.9 rework was actually a nerf because they spread out the Holy Tree. They made the Holy Tree, they made Deep Holy more healing as opposed to, to Early Holy. And they took kings out of ret. They put it in protection. They made protection kind of a little bit more utility based. Ret. They made the PVE DPS of ret better, but they made ret slightly less bursty. So they did a bunch of little things there. And for me personally, it, knowing everything I know now, and this kind of goes back to you should call back on what Stay Safe was saying earlier. Like you wish that that you could delete your brain and, and go back and play vanilla naturally, but. For me, just think about, like, if you had an opportunity in life to, to go back 15 years knowing every single thing that you know now, like, and basically, like, I, I don't know, I think that would be unreal, right? Everything that I've learned in the last 15 years, and I knew it at 11 years old. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm 26. Okay, good. And knew it at 11 years old. <laughs> and NA math, sorry, NA math. Uh, <laughs> if I knew everything I knew at and know at 26 at 11 years old, then it just, everything would be so easy, right? That's kind of the case with Vanilla WoW, getting an opportunity to do that. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I just think that uh, I think that's just something that, that, that's basically just what's on my mind. I agree. Mm -hmm. What was the question? <laughs> he was talking about. Uh, he was talking about. Oh, frick, I, I deleted it one second. Vanilla brains, man, unbelievable. Vanilla <laughs> I, I had it. I had it pasted, and I think I cleared my. I think I cleared my clipboard. It was talents. It was. Uh, it was you talents. Want, oh, you talents. Want, yeah, 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 talents. For say, talents. But basically, he was yeah. talking about how. Um, yeah, to me, like it, it, just whatever they decide, they just have to stick with it. That's basically what's been on my mind. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I did my Franken patch video a little while back, but basically my rationale is, when it comes to classes. There were so many things at the beginning of the game that were clearly bugs, but also clearly exploitative that weren't discovered until later on. Um, I think that for Blizzard to just go back to each patch and only fix the bugs is not enough to fix a lot of the exploitative and broken behavior of the classes. And for them to have to go back, look at each class during each patch and determine, you know, which of the abilities were causing exploits or unintended behavior, unintended consequences versus which ones were actually bugs. And to do that on a patch by patch basis, I, I mean, I, it sounds like it would be a lot of work uh, and a lot of testing would be required. So I don't honestly expect them to do that. And on top of that, I feel like if they're going back to fix each you know, individual patch talents and just fix the exploitative abilities, at that point, it's like they're not even preserving the true, you know, 1.1 to 112 progression anyways when it comes to classes because they're already messing with some stuff. Yeah. So the way I see it, it seems like a very valiant effort. In an ideal world, I would want it, but it doesn't seem like it's worth it to not even completely preserve the 1 to 1 progression. Although uh, I know Stay Safe disagrees. It's just my point of view. Yeah, I mean, I, I have like a selfish desire, and then I have a desire for what's what I think is best and what will probably happen for Classic WoW. Personally, if I could just like go back and relive Vanilla WoW as it as it played out, and and have all the quirks and the weird things, and the intricacies, and the 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 exploit ex exploitative behavior you said, like I, I wish I could relive <laughs> it all. I wish I could relive it all. I would yeah. like that again. Now, do I think that's what's best for the success of Classic WoW? No. Do I expect that? No. Like, I actually kind of hope we don't get that because I think that would turn off a lot of players. Yeah, like, I, I acknowledge that. But that, that's my selfish desire. I, I want to relive it. I want all the weird stuff. Yeah, I think um, this, is, this is something else that, that I was going to mention is how um, how if they decide to do the 1.12 talents, right? Let's say they decide to do the 1.12 talents off the bat. And I touched on this in, in, in Allcraft 2. If they do that, then I think it opens the door for doing like tuning of the early content to account for people just doing more damage from how they how they redid the talents. Because I, I do think like you were talking about how the honor system being implemented from the beginning helps to tri or, or attributes to trivializing the content by having like mm -hmm. rank 14 gear, like everybody has rank 14 gear by the time BWL is out in the top guild. Like they literally, people, will, what, what guilds will do is they will do like a uh, They'll raid two nights a week every two weeks around the reset. So they respect PvP and then grind honor, and then they'll go back, raid two nights, 
respect back for PvP and then do another two weeks of honor grinding and then two nights of raiding. That's what the top guilds do. And um, yeah, I mean, if, if you have the honor gear available at the launch, you're going to have that. If you have 1.12 counts available at the launch, you're going to have a lot of that too, where it's, it's just easier. So if they're doing that and making it easier indirectly, I think they need to probably go back and, and tune the content a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing as what people have seen on private servers and you're getting like freaking 25 minute MC clears, you know, on speed runs. Exactly. I definitely think, you know, like you brought up before SFN regarding the beta, that's definitely something that needs to be tested during yeah. the beta. Like just, you have to like, period. But yeah. Uh, Zoo, Zoo asks a question here. If you all had to play one class other than your main paladin, warrior and warlock, what would that be? Rogue. Rogue. Really? Rogue? Really? Yeah. I think I've been playing so much Legion, I've gotten used to combo points. <laughs> <laughs> what about your tips? Um, you know, I would have normally said Warlock, believe it or not. But, uh, but recently, I, I've come across a couple of, of Feral Druid videos by Final Flash and Stormling. And uh, when I watched those feral PvP videos, dude, those things are freaking legit, man. And I'm not going to lie. It got to the point the other day on stream where I was like, maybe I should roll a druid. Like, that's how crazy it was. It looked really, should, really fun. You should talk to Serendipities, isn't you? He's the best feral druid I know. I rated with really, really good Serendipities. Serendipities Hell yeah. He's, He's really feral. Too. He's good shadow priest, too. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, my, my second go-to is Holy Pally. I would play Holy Pally after Warlock. Play Holy Pally, and I would never go red. Not even once I would go red. Me neither. <laughs> Surrounded by paladins. Dude. <laughs> so speaking of holy and red, uh, Vandalia was asking. I heard rumors that only one viable spec was available in vanilla. Should they keep that? Should they make it no changes, or should they make uh, more viable specs? Uh, again, kind of touching on on the last question too. With that, like uh, no changes, <clears throat> but that's a big misconception. Are you talking about viable, or are you talking about optimal? Because they mean two different things. Um, Viable, like can you play Rhett in, in raids? Yes. Are you going to do as much damage as a Fury Warrior? No. Are you going to do as much damage as a Rogue? No. But as far as like, is it doable? Can you clear the content? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Do you have to do, you have to do extra to pull your weight? Yes. That's something else. You can't just go in there and just do whatever you want and expect to, to be worth taking, right? People got to like you. <laughs> That's one, because you're not going to want to raid with anybody who is a turd, especially if, like, they're not, uh, like, I mean, if somebody's a turd and they're, like, your top DPS, you're like, okay, I can deal with them a little bit. But if somebody's, like, middle of the pack or, or worse and you just have a bad attitude and stuff, it's not good. And then, two, if you're not putting in all the effort and everything else, showing up on time, doing, doing your thing, it's also not good. Um, yeah, I think that's a big misconception, viability versus, versus what's optimal. Yeah, and I mean, viability in Vanilla WoW has different moves. There's PvP viability. Some specs are, P are really good in PvP and not good in PvE. And so, for example, like uh, Elemental Shaman, if you were to try to tweak Elemental Shaman to make it balanced in, uh, in PvE, its main problem is like mana, mana management, right? It, it, you go oom um really quick. Same with Boomkin. Uh, these specs are really pretty good in PvP. So it, it'd be very difficult to balance that. The damage is there, but the mana isn't. Um, and then there are like Warlocks, for example, in uh, Molten Core, Blackwing Lair, uh, even into AQ a little bit, whose DPS is really not like, in Molten okay. Core, <laughs> Warlocks might be the worst DPS in Molten Core, like worse than Feral Druids, probably worse than, maybe even worse than Rent Paladins, like yeah. Warlocks are terrible, but they earn their spots, uh, they're viable in a different way. They're not there because of their DPS, they're there because of their curses, their banishes, their summoning, mm -hmm. their Hellstones, their Soulstones, like ban banishes primarily. Okay. So. People are viable for different reasons in different scenarios. It's not just, I have high DPS, that's why I'm here. People are, people are in the raid for different reasons, and that's why different things are, are valuable at different times. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, McLaughlin, what vanilla song gives you the most nostalgia? I think that's interesting. I kind of want to hear this from you guys. What's, what's a, nostal what was a nostalgic vanilla zone for you guys? Oh. It's it's so hard to argue against Elwyn, but I think uh, a good one. yeah. But honestly, like for whatever reason, when I get to Tenaris, I really like Tenaris, and it just—I don't know. I feel like it brings back a lot of memories. I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Elwyn is up there. I was always a gnome player though, and I'm—I'm kind of like a snow kind of boy in real life as well. I play a gnome, Winter Spring, and Dunmoreau. 
Uh, they have the same soundtrack, like the, the Snow Zone soundtrack. It's just like peaceful and everything's best zones, two best zones right there. Yeah, I, I think L1 is a really good one for me. Um, Westfall is pretty nostalgic as well. Westfall is pretty nostalgic. And I know I shouldn't level there, but I always remember leveling up an alt, getting to 13, running out of quests, and then oh, I'll play this guy later. And then I'll play the guy later. <laughs> Just go back to my main. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, Westfall's a pretty good one for me. L1 and Westfall, for sure. For sure. Uh, Tasteful Chubb asks, what's your biggest tip to vanilla noobs? Um, biggest tip to vanilla noobs? I, I would say, as far as a tip goes, you, you got you to gotta appreciate the small wins. You got to appreciate the small wins. Because in vanilla WoW, you don't have... It's 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 a grind. Yes, I get that. But it's it's a series of small wins as you're leveling. You level, you get one talent point. You get to put that talent point in. You want to appreciate that. You want to you want to take everything in step by step. In Legion, in the current game, I mean, you can't even get a talent point until 15 levels, right? It's every 15 levels you get a talent, and it it's just not. It, it doesn't feel good, and you want to take that good feeling that you get from. Dude, I got my freaking, I'm a, I'm a paladin, I'm a warrior. I wear male gear, but I got some cloth gray shoulders. I'm super excited because I actually have something to put there. I got a cloth helmet. I'm super excited. Rogues get the Defias mask that doesn't give you any stats, but you're like, man, I look freaking sweet with this mask on. Like, yeah, stuff like that. It's a bunch of little, like, small wins, right? So I, I think vanilla is all about small wins, and, and just to really take that and appreciate that. You know, just, just embrace the grind and take the small wins. Okay. I really like that. that that's that's great advice and i guess mine is kind of an extension of that this is going to sound super corny uh but just like have fun i would say probably the biggest difference what well, not the biggest one of the big one of the big differences in mindsets between if you're a retail player and you're uh, going into vanilla wow for the first time in retail vanilla sorry in retail uh, leveling is considered a chore and tedious and it's just like a time gate something you have to just do and get through and you hate every second of it and then you're and then you're 110 you can finally you can finally uh, i can finally play the game Right. In Vanilla WoW, uh, leveling is part of the game. It's full of small wins. It's formative. Uh, you can start getting a pre-raid best in slot in your mid-40s. You can start doing your attunements in your 50s. Um, like leveling, I would say go into leveling with an open mindset and uh, try to have fun with it. Because you're gonna, if you're new to the game, you're gonna spend a lot of time leveling. It's gonna take you a while probably. <laughs> so try to try to have fun with it for real. Mm -hmm. I agree. Enjoy the journey. I know that in retail, uh, the game, you know, pushes you and it keeps shoving you towards the end and it's trying to get you into raids and stuff like that. Vanilla, there's nothing pushing you. There's nothing, you know, there's no sense of urgency. Take your time, enjoy the journey, enjoy the leveling um, and be as patient as you can possibly be. If you can do that, you're going to enjoy it a lot, I think. Yeah, for sure. I like this question from Donnie Dixon because I'm, I'm pretty passionate about this one. Um, What's going to keep Classic relevant beyond the grind factor and the nostalgia factor? Do you think that re-releasing the game is a pitfall? And uh, I think absolutely not. I think the design of this game is so incredibly good. And I think a lot of it is intentional, and I think some of it was on accident. But I do think a lot of it was intentional. And what happened, a lot of people say that like, Blizzard doesn't listen to its player base. And I would say the opposite. I, I think that Blizzard sometimes listens too much to its player base. And it kind of screwed up the game that way. It's like, oh, like... Everything looks good, like on paper, and then they do it, and then in hindsight, like, oh, that sucked. That was a really bad idea for the game. Um, now, there are, like, recent things that have happened, like, you know, there's a big push for solo queue in the PvP community, and they're probably not going to do that. And that's like, oh, like, Blizzard doesn't listen. And I'm one of those guys. Like, I think solo queue would be great for the retail version of the game. But uh, just given that that's how the game has gone. But uh, I think the design of the game is so good, and people are so hungry for a good MMO that's got that kind of more old school feel, the grind, the, the uh, RPG elements to the game. Like, people were excited for Bless. I remember looking at Bless and I was like, dude, this game's gonna suck. It was number two on Twitch, on release. When I saw that, two. you're right. When I saw that, yeah. Bless is number two on Twitch, my first thought. Is your tweet. Classic, classic why I was taking this platform down. Like, yeah. it's gonna crash the site. Mark yeah. my words. Yeah. 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 Yeah, people are starving for that new MMO experience. And uh, and I totally agree with Svan. You know, Vanilla's gameplay is so timeless. Mm -hmm. It's just like basketball or chess or, you know, poker, any card game. 
it just endures and it lasts for so much longer. And um, in the event, let's, you know, just I'll entertain the, the whoever asked the question in the event that, you know, after one year, two years, when Max is on farm, whatever, um, and people are looking for new content, aside from the, the obvious TBC route that could happen or the patch 1.13 that could happen. I just think rolling fresh servers is a, is a very, it's another people very viable play. alternative. Yeah, yeah people, people are going to play it. I mean, again, it goes back to, you know, when you observe the, the private server community, I'm not endorsing private servers, but when you observe that community and you see, you know, some of the things that they're doing right, it seems like the fresh server hype thing is actually, you know, it's a viable form of content. And sometimes people want to start all over again. They, they want to experience the journey from one to 60 again with, with a completely congested zone and with their friends again. Maybe they want to roll a different faction or a different class, play the game differently. Mm -hmm. I think that, un, you know, unloading these, these um, you know, extra packets of servers as time goes on, I think is also, a, you know, it's going to prolong the game's longevity. I don't think longevity for Classic should be a concern at all, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think it's going to be good. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, like, my, my idea, or my, sorry, not my idea, my, my ideal timeline would be two years vanilla, and then after that first classic WoW vanilla server has ran its course, they open another vanilla server, and on top of that, they open a TBC server, and that yeah. lasts two years, and then you have another, a third vanilla server, and a second TBC server, and then a Wrath server, and uh, people, people say that's bad to split the community, like, uh, I, think it's fine. I don't really think... I think it's fine. I don't think that's much of an issue. I mean, really, worst case scenario, as long as you have one healthy vanilla server, that's all you need. Like, because it's because hard, each yeah. vanilla server is so isolated and there's yeah. no cross realm or cross anything, um, it it really like really big picture doesn't matter if there are 50 pop and vanilla servers or if there's one pop and vanilla server. Uh, as far as your as your as far as your individual player experience is concerned. Yeah, I think. Um, <clears throat> oh, we lost a dips. No snap. Oh, see you later. Tips. We lost him. Bye. All right. <laughs> there he is. Hello? Hello? Oh, he's back. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. So, so one of the things is... Um... Oh, you're... Uh... Oh. That's good. <laughs> okay. What? Okay, we're good. Okay, right, we're good. So, so what, um... what, what, what something is... The way things work out. Sorry. Words. English. The way things work out oftentimes, and, and this is a question that... Uh... Oh, I just lost it. Where did we go? Civix. Oh, what should people do after they cleared Nax? Sevix2 was asking. So, it's not like, for some people, they just want to kill KT and they're done. And uh, I, don't, uh, I don't quite understand that, because just because you killed... Am I still quiet? You're loud to me. I'm loud to you? Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, so, so if... Um, once they cleared KT, some people are just done. But in my opinion, like there's there's so much to accomplish, like as far as like building your character, getting your gear, finishing it out. Um, that's how I feel personally. Uh, but other people, they just they're like, okay, I'm done. I want to go reroll fresh. I want to go do something like that. I think that. I, I think that they, whenever they release a new server, again, we're looking a little bit down the road. I understand that. But if they release a new server after uh, Classic has run its course or whatever. It needs to be on the same or a similar timeline uh, that occurred originally. I think it was, I think it was June 2006, whenever Nax hit, and I think the 2.0 patch hit uh, mid or early December of that year. So that's about yeah. that's, that's five months, six months uh, for BC. BC hit about six months later. So you give it about six months after the Nax patch hits. I think that's ample time to give people an opportunity to clear Nax. Um, it wasn't originally, but I think with everything people know now and, and, and just how, I, I think the, the players have just gotten better. I think gamers have gotten better. So it, it, I think six months is, is ample time for, for clearing Nax and at least getting through that content. And then if they want to re-roll fresh, and a lot of people talk about seasons like Diablo, it's re-rolling fresh would essentially be a, the same or similar thing for seasons from what I understand. I, I haven't played Diablo, but, um, but yeah. That's that's what I think. I think that's fine. Just give it like six months after Nax releases. Yeah. Elite gamer has. It. Yeah. Sorry. I, I was gonna say elite gamer. I've seen his question a lot. Should world buffs yeah. be allowed uh, for raids? Honestly, uh, world buffs operate kind of uh, as far as I know. But I'm 99% sure world buffs operate a little bit 
uh, strangely on private servers. For example, uh, I believe back in vanilla, you couldn't have 40 people click on a song flower at the same time. I think it was only, you could only have one person get the buff from one song flower. So that would sort of uh, lessen the effect of world buffs only having one person get it. Um, as far as the other ones though, like they're in the game. I, I think if you want to min-max that hard, uh, then you should be open to min-max. Yeah. Just play the game the way you want to play it. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And there's something really cool about like the feeling of powering up before a raid. Like I getting like those it. Yeah, it's like it's like when Goku goes Super Saiyan three. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's that long scream before the raid. You're charging up, you're getting your Ani buff, you're getting your uh, you know your your uh, uh Z G buff and so on and so forth. It just you're getting the dire mall buffs, it makes you feel like you're getting progressively stronger. And then you just like unload in the raid. It feels really, really good. Yeah, I think uh, uh, one thing that's interesting is a lot of the top level players, a lot of the top level players like like world first, server first type of guys, actually hate world buffs. They they don't want world buffs in the game. They actually, from what I've heard, because I've I'm, I know a lot of guys in that community, they they actually want a lot of like oh they should do this, they should do that. But it's because of what did we talked about earlier was do you want to cater to the one percent or the ninety nine percent? And mm -hmm. the, a lot of the 1%, they don't like world buffs because if something crazy happens and they die, then they, they lose their parse for the week. And yeah. they, they're trying to push yeah. meters, they're trying to do this, so they, they just hate world buffs altogether. Me, personally, I love world buffs. I think they're fun, I think it's, I think it's cool. I know for me, personally, like on what class I play, they're very beneficial, uh, just because I'm a hybrid and I get benefit from the caster stats and the melee stats. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it is what it is, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like world buffs. Uh, I don't think they should change anything like that regardless, but I do think it's interesting that the, the very the, the high-end community, uh, many people in it do not like world buffs. I just thought it was funny. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, uh, I see people saying only the 1% use them anyway. I, I think they're, this might sound kind of harsh, there are a lot of like lower-end guilds that uh, might not see some, some content without world buffs. Uh, mm -hmm. it, help, it helps a lot of sort of uh, casual guilds see the content in the first place. World buffs are hugely beneficial. I, I know a lot of a lot of like uh, most guilds, I think get get maybe not all of them, uh, but a lot of people get a lot of the buffs in in, in lower guilds as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, kind of a follow up. I, I want to answer Sevik's question again because I think it's a pretty good follow up to it. He's like, I understand that I want to build that you want to build your character, but what if you've gotten rank 14 and killed Keltazad? What left is there? So like, I mean, it's just getting getting like fully best in slot. That's something I want to do. Like, I want to get everything that I can get, um, and just dominate in PvP. That's what I would want to do. But I, I do think that's a good point too. I mean, like for somebody like you, like you might kill Keltazad and you might want to quit. Like, I, like, I, that, and that's fine. That's just how people want to play. Like, like as I said, play the game the way you want to play it, right? I, I completely agree. And um, I think for the vast majority of people, you know, it's easy to say get rank 14, kill Kel'Thuzad. But, uh, you know, it, it takes yeah. a long time to get there. Like, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. And the vast majority of people, even after 14 years, they're never going to kill Kel'Thuzad. They're never going to get full tier through BIS. They're always going to have that carrot on a stick. And, um, and there's always, you know, there's always rolling on a different class or a different faction. You know, there's so many different things, so many different challenges to create. Um, but I definitely think that what's really going to help Vanilla last and Classic really, you know, endure the test of time is the community events that are going to spawn once the game launches. You're going to get a lot of, you know, tournaments, PvP tournaments, dueling tournaments, things like, oh, let's all go raid, you know, Terran Mill or something like that. Um, that's really what's going to give the game life. And once you're in vanilla and once you're, you know, kind of enraptured by the community, by that community, it's going to be very hard to leave because at the end of the day, even though the gameplay content is done, community content never ends. You're always going to have those people there. You're always going to have those experiences with your friends that lasts forever. Yeah. Sorry, stay safe. Do you want to say something about that? Because I, I just talked about it. Uh, no, no, go ahead. Uh, I actually, uh, I, I was reading something. Sorry. I was no, checking something. Um, <clears throat> I actually think like the, the community stuff is it's there it's true but I, I do think and this is something that, that I've talked about in the past uh, Blizzard is a, is a company they, they want to make a profit and I think uh, they do hit a point where they'll if they don't do something then it'll let the game die and they, and they won't they don't want to let their game die excuse me it'll make the game die and they don't want to let their game die uh, because at the end of the day like 
making your own content can only go so far. That's a lot of what we're seeing in Legion. I mean, you look at the top Legion streams, whether it's like, uh, you know, like, for example, two people. Take Asmongold and, and Annie Fuchsia, for example. They're doing all the things. They're trying to collect everything. That's what Stay Safe's doing. He's trying to collect everything. This is uh, making your own content, in a sense. And, and just, it's, it's having a fun stream environment, personality stream. And I think that's great. I, I think that's, that's awesome that, that you're able to do that, that you have that option. But whenever you have to make your own content from a, from a player standpoint, as opposed to from, a, from a, having the option to do that as a streamer, I think it's two different things. And you shouldn't be forced to create your own content in order to play the game. And I think that that's where, you know, fresh or even post nax content, we're talking 1.13 and so on, comes in. Uh, which is why, I mean, that on top of the fact that OSRS was so successful after they, they released uh, progressive content, I think that's why they'll, they'll probably release post nax content. Yeah, I, I do think, I think you're right. I agree with what you said. Um, I also think that, I, can you guys think of a game I can't think of any game that, that rewards and incentivizes community interaction uh, more than Vanilla WoW. I can't think of a single game. Not a single one. I can't think of one. And for me, for most people you ask, I mean, uh, the content is great, right? Rating is just fine. Ranking is fine. PvP is fine. It's all fine. Uh, but the big attraction for a lot of people that has kept people playing Vanilla WoW on <laughs> undocumented service for the last eight years or whatever, they've just been replaying it over and over and over again. It's because of uh, because of every day you log in, there's new drama, there's new rivalries, there's new friendships, there's new there, there's it, it, every time you replay through it, it changes every single time, and there's something to do every day. I yeah, agree. Mm -hmm. that's the big draw for a lot of people. I think that that's my favorite thing it is is playing and hanging out with other people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I know, like, I can, for me, like, my, my, I, <laughs> I'll tell you the story. So I remember the first time I got the name Rhett Bull. That was, like, the, when, whenever I got the nickname Rhett Bull. And it was after I released my, my video of me, like, doing, on, on the first, at the time, Sanctum Raid 3 Raid. This is on my YouTube channel. And uh, it's still up there, by the way. It's Rhett Paladin number one raid DPS. Where, I mean, it was a crap raid. Like, it was the, the video was supposed to be, like, kind of funny, tongue-in-cheek. But I ended up being top damage after Lucifron. And we, we didn't kill anything past Lucifron. Like, it sucked. We were Sanctum Raid 3. Eventually spun off into, into what became my guild eventually. Um, I remember I posted that video, and it was on the top of the Lights Hope Reddit. And uh, I... Uh, people were, like, just, like, or literally orbiting me. Like, running in circles around me in Iron Forge. And it was a lot of mandate guys, and Artie is like the Red Bull, the Red Bull, and like it was just like the thing that just kind of became a meme. So that's whenever I started drinking, like or doing the Red Bull thing on stream and all this stuff. Um, I don't know. Drinking I, on stream. I, yeah, drinking on stream, bro. No, I uh, I started doing the Red Bull <laughs> stream, and and it's like stuff like that that happens in the community, and and uh, like I, I mean uh, those guys are awesome. Like I mean it's it's fun, you know. I can go on the Iron Forge Bridge. And you can see the same people there every single day, just like BSing. Like I would go up to Manlet, and I would just slash Neil in front of him and call him the Mighty Gnome King because he's exactly in the center of the bridge, on the right side, facing out from the bank. And I just go the Mighty Gnome King, and then he would just hand me like six stacks of water every single time. Like <laughs> it's just like you have those sort of interactions, and it's it's kind of uh, it's endearing. It's cool. Like I don't know, I I really miss that. What's your guys? Uh favorite and least favorite dungeon in vanilla wow um honestly first of all i feel like with this with this question especially favorite dungeons you can't ask i mean you have to exclude brd because that's it's such a giveaway and like it's like asking who's the greatest basketball player it's not fun when you include michael jordan so it's like uh, excluding brd i would say my favorite raid ever is zulfarak I think it's perfectly designed. I think it's got a great balance of events, hard bosses, secret epic gear. Um, you know, there's so many different things. The Jintha allure, you know, sacred mallet retrieval. There's so much about it that's just so perfectly designed. Mallet. That freaking Helm's Deep, like that event uh, with uh, the, the Divinomatic Rod event. Like, it's just, it's incredible. Everything about it. Least favorite dungeon. And I got a, a lot of flack for saying this when I made my video about it like a long time ago. Nomergon, not because of the dungeon itself, but because of its leveling position. It like, it's a it's great dungeon. Cumbersome. It's cumbersome, yeah. Like especially at level thirty, and right before like what's arguably one of the easiest dungeons in the game, the Scarlet Monastery Wings. 
um, that reward a lot better gear for the most part, except for like, you know, particular classes. Um, it's just such a, like, a, I don't, I don't want to say difficult, but it's definitely such a cumbersome dungeon considering it's a level 30 dungeon. And when you can wait like two or three more levels to get into SM, I feel like it's just too much for that level. And as a result, very few people do it. It's personally. long too. It's yeah. long and hard. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, I, I can tell you like about Nomergen, the last stretch, going to the last boss, there's like that, that tunnel that leads yeah. up to it. That tunnel for its level, I think is the hardest tunnel or the, the hardest portion of an instance for its level out of any other instance. Like, I don't mines, know how many times yeah. the mines, I, I, sometimes they bug out and this stuff, but like the, the mobs themselves are for some reason way, like that's way harder. The trash packs are way harder than the last boss. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're getting, no, we're getting some pain. Uh, that's a, that's a good one. Um, yeah. No, we're getting is pretty bad. Maradon is cool, but also very cumbersome, but at least it's cool. Uh, yeah, I, I would, I would be, I think Nomergen's a good answer for worst. For favorite, UBRS is really awesome. Um, UBRS is really awesome. Just like the whole like, I, I, here's the thing with BRD, I actually don't, I, I would not, even including BRD, I wouldn't say BRD is my favorite, even though I have like a big appreciation for BRD because it's so, it's huge. It's expansive. There's a lot of awesome stuff in there. You, you got the Anvil, you have the Forge, you have MC Attunement, you have a Nixie Attunement. But I wouldn't say that's my personal favorite. Hmm. And I'm leaning towards, oh, or, or Strath Undead. Baron, Baron Side Stratholm is, is also really good. UBRS or Baron Side Stratholm are probably my, my two favorites, I would say. It's hard to say. Yeah. I like UBRS a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the worst. Devs, the yeah, Blackrock Devs. And uh, UBRS is Upper Blackrock Spire. Mm -hmm. You guys are all going to have to run Upper Blackrock Spire a lot. So I, I hope you like it. Yeah. <laughs> everyone has to do that uh, for raid attunements and for gear, and everyone needs gear from there. Um, I think my least favorite is probably Dead Mines. I hate, I've always hated Dead Mines yeah. because everyone, everyone's a noob. Um, people try to go in there too early. Runs are always bad. The graveyard is super far away. Uh, you, you're gonna die because everyone's toolkit is so limited. Yeah, and it's um, easy to pull mobs. It's easy to pull too many people. Typically, if your group wipes, uh, people tend to, to just leave the leave the group, and it's just done. Um, yeah. Now, best you guys haven't. I'm surprised you guys didn't mention this. Also, <laughs> by, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. If you're trying to level quickly and like, and uh, <laughs> if you're trying to level quickly and play efficiently, dead mines is a noob trap. You're in, it's a noob trap. It, it really is. is. Actually, actually, the entire zone of Westfall is a noob trap. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, the best dungeon in the game, the best dungeon is the game in the game is uh, Moradon. Do you guys remember right. going through Moradon the first time and you enter uh, the Earth Song Falls, and you uh. look up in the sky and it's just like it's just crazy. I didn't know I didn't know a dungeon could look that good. And then you fight through the caves and you go you you, you come out. Uh, into the grotto leading into Princess Mordon, and you're fighting across that bridge, and uh, you're seeing Princess Mordon, and the sky is like there, and there's the the water running down, and the, and there's the vines dangling down. That's like the coolest looking dungeon. That's the coolest looking it's thing really cool. in Vanilla WoW. It's it really cool. Yeah. I just think Mordon's very cumbersome to me too, though. Like not as bad as Nomergen, but it's very cumbersome. Like just getting there is is really annoying, um, but it's a really cool dungeon on its own. Those yep. freaking yeah. centaurs that stun you outside of Desolus is super. Yeah. Yeah, it takes but a freaking I, half an hour to get in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But I like, I mean, I think Moradon's really cool. Like, uh, thematically, absolutely. And there's a lot of good gear in there, too. Um, I, I do agree. I like it, honestly. I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. um, let's, do, let's do one more question. We're going to do one more question. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. After, uh, after this question, I, I'm going to keep the stream on, and I'm going to continue to stream. I'm going to uh, I'll stream some WoW for a little bit probably, but I also want to play some Dark Age of Camelot. If you guys have been following my stuff lately, I've been playing a little bit of Dark Age of Camelot. So uh, it's, a, it's another old-school MMO. It's the MMO I played before Vanilla WoW. So if you guys are interested in watching some of that, we'll play some Dayoc. We'll play some, we'll play some Retail WoW, and then go play some Dayoc probably, and then uh, we'll have a good time. It'll be, it'll be good stuff. So one last question. 
let's see. Oh, my chat keeps freaking out. Let's see. Do you guys see one that you like? Oh, QC Finest, what is this? Um, Are we going to do another question after this question? Uh, nope, thanks, uh, show's over, bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, let's do this one from McLaughlin, let's do this one from McLaughlin. You think it would be a good idea to make totally new realm names to potentially avoid players recreating old realm population from back in the day? Um, uh, I don't think so, I don't think that's gonna be a problem, I yeah. think, uh, that's such a gargantuan effort to locate everybody that was on a server back in the day and, and get them involved. I don't think that's going to be an issue. I actually think it'd be really cool if they recreated the same realm names. Um, I definitely think there's a nostalgia factor there. Yeah. But uh, but even if they created new ones, I, I just I'm indifferent to it, honestly. Yeah, I, I think there's there's two parts to this. I think you're right, tips that like I, I think it would be cool, but also the, the confusion that comes from, I mean, you already have like, for example, uh, Illidan US and Illidan EU, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're gonna have Illidan US Classic, Illidan EU Classic. So maybe they are gonna make all new realm names. Maybe, they are gonna, maybe the server names are gonna be new altogether. That's, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, think, I think it would be something cool to do, but I'm thinking about it logistically. Is that something that they would wanna do? Like Illidan US Classic, Illidan EU Classic, Illidan US, Illidan EU. Like now you've got like four different variations of Illidan, for example. Yeah, kind of that's weird, complicated. Right? Yeah, that sounds cumbersome. I would imagine different realm names. This is something that I don't I actually didn't see anyone ask, but I, I see people. I, I think people are worried about this, and I see people talk about this all the time on forums and in my chat. You guys probably have heard this as well. Uh, the concern that you will uh, pick a server and play on it, and then your server will die after three months. And you'll have invested all this time in a server and uh it'll be dead and you won't be able to do anything and how how to properly pick a server well i guess like do you guys have any advice for this before i get into it i, I kind of want to hear what you have to say actually yeah i mean i would say first off i don't think it's going to happen i don't think we're going to have like mass server die off uh, early on in vanilla wow or cl sorry classic wow mm -hmm. two uh, i guess if you really really want to stay safe um <laughs> Oh God! Uh, if if you really want to make a good decision, uh, yeah, okay. If you really want to make a good decision, I would say uh, nice solar. I would pick a server that has like a like uh, maybe a very good guild or a very active guild on it. I would pick a server that uh, has like a very active popular streamer, um, uh, or, or several streamers. Like for example, our server. Uh, we, as far as I know, we're all going to play on the same server, and there will be some other people that play with us as well. Um, mm -hmm. That server, I'm not concerned about dying off. I agree. That's what I would say. And and try to pick a server like one of the reasons why I'm really liking our server like is not only because you know we have a couple of streamers playing on it, but we have streamers that are willing to play on both factions, which is the most important part. I love Soda Pop and I love Asmongold, but realistically, rolling on their server, it's probably going to be 80 or 90 percent whatever faction they choose, assuming that you know they're able to to get everybody in there that wants to play with them. Um, definitely try to play on a server that's going to have an active community, but also has some kind of, you know, preemptive, you know, faction balancing going on. I think that's going to create the best experience possible. Just a preference, but that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, I actually, you know, it's funny about Soda. I, I don't know. I, I think you might be playing PvP. Actually, there's a chance you might be playing PvP. Yeah, I heard that too. Interesting enough. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll, it'll be cool. Uh, it, it'll be cool seeing how all this stuff plays out. Um, <clears throat> I think we're gonna. I think, think we're gonna call it a day. I'm gonna keep the stream on. I'm gonna continue to stream. Like I said, I'll play some WoW. I'll play some Dark Age of Camelot. Please, 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 follow tips, tips out baby on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. All that stuff is right there. Stay safe as well. Stay safe TV on Twitch and YouTube, and stay safe Warlock on Twitter. And then myself, there's the S Fan TV, Discord, YouTube, Twitter, all that stuff. If you haven't already hit my channel with a follow, please hit my channel with a follow. Uh, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a a, a quick bathroom break, and uh, and then I'll keep the stream going for for anybody who wants to stay and hang out and, and chat a little bit more. Yeah, guys, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I guess uh, that's that's it. Yeah, take it easy, guys. I'm going to dip out. Have a good rest of your day.
good. Tips out, baby. <laughs>